Hi and welcome on this video about how to create your first blog page with WordPress. If you're completely new to WordPress, I suggest you to check our existing content on the blog post at this.co forward slash blog or actually on our YouTube channel to actually get started with this uh, static site generator. If you also want, you, you can actually install WordPress by using it existing uh, documentation from the main site that is really, really well written and therefore easy to follow. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to write your first blog post and your first page in WordPress. A page in WordPress is, uh, has two main parts and we're going to cover them both in this video. The first one is the front matter and the second one is the markdown editor. Let's go over and let's start with the front matter. You can access the front matter documentation on wittpress.dev forward slash references forward slash front matter config. You can also find this page by just clicking on the search and writing front matter. You will see that it's the first one on the search results. Uh, this page uh, provides you all the information that you need to learn about your front matter. But I'm going to tell you a couple that are really, really important if you want your site to uh, score very well with SEO and also for, um, uh, you know, for your site performance in general. So a front matter is a set of configuration that is actually provides uh, the markdown file and therefore with press information on what the page is about and how the page should be displayed. So it's not about the content of the page, it's not the heading, the text or the link, but it actually is the things around it, how things are displayed in general. The first and most important front matter that we're going to learn is the title. Um, title is a, a must for every page you ever write. A, a title should be unique and is used mostly by all SEO, by search, uh, search console uh, index. Um, to uh, to index your page and know what, what is the page about and set it. So if you go on Google and search my page, it will try to find and show all the pages that have a title on my page. Or, you know, of course, you use way more than just a title, but the title is very important. To actually set a title, we uh, we need to uh, set uh, use the variable called title, uh, argument called title within front matter, and we need to place it within these two, um, um, you know, the limiter that are that define the start and the end of our front matter. If we go back to um, an instance that I have of view uh, of WordPress, you see that I have a page called my first page .md with front matter lines actually defined. So if I go here and actually specify the title. This will set the title for me. So if we go back and actually uh, refresh this page, um, this page will now have a title of uh, my page BNC. We can't see it. We're going to see now as we're going to expect element. But before we do so, we have to move on to the next uh, uh, important uh, front matter that you should know and always set for each of your blog posts or pages in general, no matter if they're blog posts, and it's the description. So when you use the description metadata, a uh, front matter, it actually will sp specify the, uh, the meta tag in the head. So it will create a meet meta of type description um, with the value of whatever value you pass. So if I actually select this and actually go here and save it, this now, this page now will have a good title and a description for SEO. This should be around 100 characters, so actually be under 150 characters, so it should be for, uh, good for SEO. There are some times where you need to specify something that is a bit more um, um, ad hoc. And let's say, for example, there will be cases where with Google Analytics or with that information where you need to add something in the head. To be able to do that, we can use the add parameter and you can pass this um, information. For example, in this case, we can now pass a meta of, um, of, um, uh, of keywords. So what you can see here, is that it actually specified a meta keywords and it passes keywords for our site. Now, keywords are not extremely important anymore for SEO, uh, way less than they were before, but this is just to show you um, how this will be done. So by doing this, we will add something now within our head. Um, you can actually go through the documentation and see all the different types of um, configuration that there are. So there's ability for you to enable or disable nav bar, sidebar and the sides and set some other information such as edit link and last updated. 
but for the content, uh, for the scope of this uh, this um, this video, this is enough. So having a title, having a description, and knowing how to uh, override the head is quite good for a um, average and good blog post or a page that you actually want to do. The next things that we're going to learn is the metadata. Uh, sorry, the Markdown editor. So the Markdown is also as a page within the configuration. So if we go here, you see that the really got it open. But if you go in the search here, you can just write Markdown extension. And this is the page we're going to look at. So uh, WordPress comes with a very good Markdown engine. This has a lot of the most used feature and even more. Um, so uh, I'm just going to focus on a couple of them. As you can see, there's quite a few of them, but we're just going to focus on some of them that are the most important ones. If you're completely new to Markdown, I do suggest you to watch a video too because it's important for you to understand what Markdown is and how to use it. And we're not going to cover that as part of this, this video. Um, there's a few things that I really like. So the first thing that I like about Markdown is the ability in, in WordPress is the ability to actually specify table of content. So let's say, for example, I want to uh, create a table of content that shows all my headings. I just can use the brackets, bracket TOC. And then let's say, for example, that I'm going to copy this, uh, this layout. So as you can see, I go heading one and subheading. So if I save this now and I go back to my page, oh, Apologies. If I go back here now and actually uh, save, um, add, add headings. So as you can see, I got a couple of headings here, uh, heading two and heading threes. If I save this and go back to our um, application, we can actually see that the heading, table of content has been created. What is nice about the table of content is it also creates links. So if I click on it, it will, it will actually go down to the, the, the correct headings. Of course, this doesn't look pretty because it's just number, but it's much better when you have a full, um, full blown headings there, a uh, table of content. Uh, something else as well to, um, uh, to learn from the existing markdown uh, provided, uh, engine provided by uh, WordPress is actually the, uh, the syntax highlighter. So WordPress is usually uh, used for documentation of technical, um, technical sites, therefore APIs and explanation and a code example. So it's very important for uh, WordPress to provide a very strong syntax highlighting within their Markdown offering. So they use something, a package called uh, Shiki, Shiki uh, that really provides a lot of feature for syntax highlighting. So just to go very quickly, uh, we have normal highlighting, uh, we have uh, ability to highlight a specific line or multiple lines, as you can see here. We also have the ability to uh, focus. So this is the one that I like the most. So as you can see, it actually, it focuses just a specific line. Uh, and then this, that is really great because it shows the other than remove um, lines. That is very useful when you want to uh, build the page from the ground up and, and really have your reader being engaged with uh, your content. So I'm just going to get a very simple example. We're going to go here on the highlighted. Um, uh, we're just going to copy. This is normal markdown. The only difference is that there is a uh, curly brackets with the number of uh, the line that need to be highlighted. And then when we go back here, uh, let's remove the table of contents. So it's much cleaner. Uh, if I save this now and then go back to my page, you see that I have a, uh, a JavaScript block with the highlighted there. Before I leave, really the last thing that I want to do is remind people on how to add our newly created page on the sidebar. Uh, so this is something that people always forget. The sidebar is statically created, is not actually created out of the box. Um, and to be able to add this page, it is my first page. Uh, for me to access this page, I access it manually, uh, but we're actually able to add it on the sidebar. To add it on the sidebar, we need to go on the WordPress document uh, configuration that can be found in .vpress folder. There's a config.mgs and there is a sidebar here. So as you can see, we have a set of items. We're just going to a comma, curly bracket, text, and we're going to call it menu page. And then the link is going to be my first page. So if I save this now, 
no reason to refresh because it's all uh, hot reloaded. You can see that my page is actually showing and it's already highlighted as well because it's the same. Uh, it's already activated because it's the current page. So what we learn in this video? We learn how to uh, s how to learn about new front matter. So we just introduce a couple, but it's more on the website. We learn how front matter are important, how to need to be used for your OSCO and for other configuration. And then we also learned the available markdown um, syntax and feature within um, uh, within WordPress. We just highlighted just a couple of them, but I suggest you to actually go on documentation and see some more. With this knowledge, you should be able to now start and write your blog posts, your pages, and actually make your website awesome. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to see you and actually create more content for WordPress, Vue, and anything else on the JavaScript ecosystem. Thank you for tuning, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. This program is presented by This.Labs, a framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.